Uruguay beat Canada on penalties and took the third place in the Copa America. If you guys like videos about the Copa America, we're going to be doing a bunch of takeaways from the tournament, dropping after the conclusion tomorrow night, uh, talking about almost every single team. So hit subscribe, you know, including videos covering Canada and Uruguay. And I could probably go for an hour and a half on Uruguay right now. We're going to keep it short. I could probably go for an hour on Canada. We're going to keep that short as well. Drop the video a like if you guys could. How do you want to start this? Also, we're going live for the final tomorrow. How do you want to start this? Should we start with the Canada side? Or do we start with the Uruguay side? You have like two seconds to decide. I think we start with Uruguay. Let's okay. just go throughout the progression of the game. Uruguay early. What do they look like to you early? Well, they scored a goal, and maybe for a split second, it was looking like it was going to be a route. We literally looked at each other in that moment and thought, okay, that was a Bendancur. I don't know if you could call it a banger, but it was a nice goal. It was a nice goal, and you basically, in this game, had Uruguay's 18, 100%, except for Araujo, but Nandes is back from suspension, and Canada start an 18-year-old from the Fulham Academy? As one of their two CBs, no Jonathan David, no Estacchiao, no Alfonso Davis, no Kyle Laren, which might be a positive. If you had told me that they had the 18-year-old from the Fulham Academy starting, and you had told me up until the Bentancur goal how the game was going, I would have believed you. The 30 minutes following that, I would have... I would have been shocked. Yeah. I, I don't, like, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. What I just watched. It was, um, it was honestly wild. Do you have anything you want to say about how Canada turned the ship around there? Because it was a complete 180 to me. Well, I think you have to say Uruguay's desire was, I, I cannot be more clear, an embarrassment to the country and an embarrassment to the Copa America. Now, when people hear that, they're going to say that Uruguay didn't care about this game because it's a glorified friendly. If you think the third place game of any tournament is a glorified friendly, you're an absolute idiot. You're an absolute moron. Don't you dare disrespect the Copa America like that by trying to wipe your ass with a medal at this tournament and say it's a friendly. Connor, um, there must also be Elsa did when when. Uruguay conceded twice. Did he look like he was watching his team concede in a friendly match? No, no, he didn't. Huh, interesting. During the penalty shootout, was was he excited when his team scored, or did he look like he couldn't be bothered? He was very excited. Okay, Jesse Marsh, did he look like he gave a damn? Jesse Marsh gave a damn. What about uh, every single player after they scored their goal? Suarez, did he look like he just scored in a glorified friendly? No. When he equalized in the 93rd minute? Nope. Every one of you that thinks that is a bell end. I'll see you just click out the video. I don't oh, even watch your oh, video. No, 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 no. Don't tell me to calm down. You guys are fools. You guys are fools. You want to get mad at me? You can get mad at me. I just think you're, I, I think it's a quite pathetic stance. Because it, it's discrediting, it's insulting, and it's discrediting. If Canada wins it, you're discrediting everything Canada did in this Copa America. Because you're saying Uruguay didn't care. Which for them to lead Uruguay to the extent that they did and perform against Uruguay in the way that they did is arguably, you know, you know what, screw it, I'm going to say it. That's the best Canadian performance I've ever seen. That's probably one of the best CONCACAF I can't say performances that. I've ever seen. But it was a very, very good game from Canada. A Canada side that was heavily rotated. They should heavily have been the rotated. ones looking like they were throwing the game. And instead, Uruguay were the team that looked just pathetic. They became, and mind you, I'm speaking specifically about select players on the team. It was not the entirety of them, but the majority of the team became lackadaisical um, after scoring their goal. They became comfortable, and everybody just looked like they knew a goal was coming later. Like they felt, okay, somebody else has got this. I can jog around. I think um, later on in the game, you even cited Bentancur and Fede walking, which you're not messy. My friend, you're not messy. That's part of the game plan, what have you. He can do that. You're not messy. Even just, if you were, I don't like when Messi walks. You shouldn't be walking. You're down 2-1 in the 86th minute of a Copa America in a medal round. I, I just, I don't understand why we do this. 
we treat the bronze medal at the Olympics like it's a big deal. But the bronze medal at the Copa America isn't. The Olympics is a U23 tournament. Why are we trying to do this? It really, really upsets me. Because that's a big deal. If Canada won this game, it's the biggest achievement in their footballing history. Yeah. And I'm not going to let you throw dirt on that. Because you might be watching, and I have a, a good feeling I know what most of your uh, nationalities are. You don't want to give Canada their, their due. You don't want to see Canada do something that the rest of CONCACAF abysmally failed to do, by the way. And I think Canada walks away with the bronze in their first Copa America. I mean, they're already, they're still big winners. They lost in penalty kicks to an Uruguay A team with their kids, basically. Ali Ahmed starting right wing. I didn't even know who their central midfielder was. Yeah. Alua Yesi, but we've been saying his name Al- wrong. Alua Seyi. Alua Seyi got the start. No Kyle Aaron, which is actually a good thing. Incredible game from Canada. The game was pretty much Bentoncourt scored, Canada dominate, and then every like 15 to 20 minutes, Uruguay would have a really, really, really good chance. And either Cornelius is blocking it or the shot's going wide or Arascaeta can't, pass, can't place a pass. Uruguay was controlling the pace of the game for... Almost the majority of the game. You think so? I, dude, I completely disagree. Did I say Uruguay? Yeah. I mean Canada. Yeah. Uruguay were... Uruguay were the passenger dude, in this game. What is going on? Yeah. Yeah. They they really felt like a passenger. That's a very excellent way to put it. I thought Ugarte was terrible. I thought Bentecourt was... Tell me, what was the stat you told me before we hopped on here for, for Ugar, Ugarte? Ten of... He had 11 attempted passes in the first half. As a starting center mid. As a starting center mid. I've seen high school games where the expectations are higher. And he's been a very good player this tournament for Uruguay. He has. But this, this was not good. I think it's indicative of the attitude of some of the players, you know? Like Fede, frankly, I would say Fede looked like he didn't care. My man's been playing like this the entire tournament. It was a poor Copa America. We, so, for the sake of time, we shouldn't go player by player. We yeah. should do that for like... You know, no, I'm just citing about. specific yeah, yeah, examples yeah, yeah, yeah. that I yeah. can think of. We don't yeah. have to do every single one. Um, let's see. What else do we need to talk about from this game? Um, Uruguay, I mean, there's something to be said about how this Copa America transpired. And what I mean by that is you come out... First off, most, I would say Argentina is the favorite for the Copa America. I think Uruguay was most people's too. Y'all, y'all can go back and delete your old tweets. I already saw them. And I screenshotted them. It's too late. I know what she said. And then probably it was Brazil. And then it was Colombia. And then who cares? And the way the Copa America started in the first two games, you beat Panama 3-1. And there's a lot of missed chances from Darwin Nunez. You can, you can say, okay, it should have been five. Whatever. You get a pass. You annihilate Bolivia. Nobody cares. Then you scrape past the U.S. Scrape. You basically score a goal that we, we're still not even 100% sure if he was onside. You score no goals against Brazil, the worst Brazil side maybe ever. You beat them on penalties. You score no goals against Colombia, who had 10 men for 75 minutes. And you need Luis Suarez to save you. You need Josema to save you in the 94th minute against the Canada B team. Your center back providing the assist to a goal. Nobody's stock for the Copa started this high and then just went like this with every passing round. Meanwhile, Canada, the exact inverse. The exact They went like inverse. this. They passed them. Honestly, they're, they're far. I know they didn't get the bronze, but they're far bigger winners in Uruguay. So, so you would say, would you say outright that this result, the way that it stands, is probably more damaging for Uruguay and more positive for Canada, right? What would what would you say is further? Is do you think that this is more harmful to the the, the tournament as a whole? Yes, it's more harmful for Uruguay than positive for Canada. Let us know in the comments. This Copa to me is more damaging to Uruguay than it is helpful to Canada. Very quickly, why I say that? You look at some of the Canadian performances, and I think you can put asterisks if you want to hate. You can put asterisks, and sometimes it is important context next to some of those performances. Yes, you beat Peru, but they had ten men. Yes, you tied Chile, but they had 10 men. Yes, you beat Venezuela, but it was on pens. I'm not discrediting this, but I'm just saying that is what happened. That's not hate. That is how the games went down. But they still got it done at the end of the day. They got it done. Maybe they got a little lucky, but they still got it done at the end of the day. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Most people have been getting grouped. You know who's going to remember this? All the the intangibles, all the, uh, the, uh, the, the details. 
the uh, what is it when you're arguing semantics? Yeah, semantics is all it is. Right. In a month, in two months, when it comes time for the next cycle of World Cup qualifying, yeah, nobody cares. You can you can argue was this a good Copa for Canada? Was this a great Copa? What you can't argue is this was a dub. Yeah. They got it by hook or by crook. By hook or by crook, there. they got it. And I think if there was any doubt about the Justin Marshall point, man, I think it's dead. Dead in the this water. Tournament. Dead in the water. Look at the way the man screams on the sideline. Look at how pissed off he's getting. I mean, if you think that they don't care about this, maybe some of the players don't give a damn. But look at Jesse Marsh and look at Bielsa. They were arguing mm-hmm. on the touchline. Mm-hmm. You don't go toe-to-toe with Bielsa if you don't give a damn. Oh, both coaches cared a lot. They cared a ton. And if the players on Uruguay had a half of the passion that Bielsa showed right there, this could have been a rub. Dude, that's a weird one for me, and we should talk about that more in, in a separate video. How can the coach care that much more than the players visibly? Not all the players, but some of them for Uruguay. Yeah, not all of them. Not all of them. I want to, I want to keep some more praise on Canada, and I, yeah. I think you have to on Ismael Kone. Yeah. Um, he was not the best at this Copa America. He's a very, very highly rated Canadian player. People were telling us that he's clearer than a U.S. midfielder. This was a phenomenal game. I mean, going up against Ugarte, Bentancur, and Valverde, a guy at PSG, Real Madrid, and Tottenham, he was the best midfielder on the pitch, and it was not even close. And he needed that. He needed that, and he got it. Shout out to Kone. Jonathan David needed that equalizer. I mean, I know he scored, you know, one of Canada's two goals at this Copa, and you could say, oh, he accounted for 50% of their goal output. You need more than, you than need one more than that. from Jonathan Day. And he'll hold himself to a higher expectation than that as Correct. Well. And he scored the penalty yes. as well. He's that kind of player. Yes. He, He's that kind he, of player. He just made, he made his tournament seem more palpable with that yeah. goal and that penalty conversion. Do you have anything to say about Alfonso Davies and the failed Panenka in the penalty shootout? Look, you you, you can try things. Um, if they don't work out, you look the way you look. Uh, I think we all felt that Uruguay was going to come away with it. You know, if the results stand, if everybody scored the rest of their penalties, which without, is most likely. Without Crepo. Without Crepo. Without Crepo. Yes, yeah. which is an odd selection. I don't know that, if he was eliminated that. for some reason, but... I thought it was very strange to take him out. Um, I, I don't understand that. If there that was, was probably Canada's biggest omission, in my Correct. Opinion. If there was one thing Jesse Marsh did where I was like, I don't know, bro. Start Keep Crepo. He's new to the national team anyways. I know he had a phenomenal Copa America, but the brother's still new. Like, keep him in for one more. Let him go. Let him go. Let him, let him, let him play. You already given like five other, six, five, six other players, like uh, their debut in the Copa, if you want to yeah. call it that. The debut start in the Copa, I would have started Craig Bell. But sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. That's that's really all I had to say. It looked like it was going to be. Uh, it looked all. If things played out the way that they should, right, according to the odds, Uruguay wins anyway. So yeah, sure. Why not try something avant garde? Mm-hmm. Exact same thing happened to Messi. It just is what it is. It's it's unfortunate that he hit it with that much sauce. If you're gonna do it, go all the way. Is my opinion, but. I mean, mm-hmm. tough. That's not the reason they lost the game. No. It is no. quite literally the defining moment. But, frankly, if, if you want my honest opinion, Canada, you cut out harder chances than, than Luis Suarez's goal that he scored. You cut out much more difficult chances. And, frankly, the Canadian fans look stunned then as well. You should have wrapped yeah. it up. You should have wrapped it up. You yes. should have you should have had an extra guy back. Take it home. You know why Canada lost this game? Why? Because they couldn't finish. Yeah. That's why they lost. That's why they lost. They, yeah. They yeah. had better, they had more shots, they had better chances, higher quality chances than Uruguay. Uruguay had really good chances in this game too. Like, it could have easily been a 4-4. I'm not even kidding. It yeah. could have been 4-4. Um, but they didn't They didn't take advantage. When the game was really there, when, they, when it was still 1-1, or when Canada even went up 2-1, when it was there to just... Put the Uruguayans away because they wanted. They were like an old dog. I mean, they just wanted to be put down. They were like they wanted it. They yeah. were. They were. It was like it was like Viserys, you know. <laughs> it was Viserys near the end. He, he said, was Let like me die. he literally was like no more, please. Like literally, that's what Fede was saying. He was whispering into the ear, 
of Ismail Kone um, during every single throw-in. And they couldn't get it done. And that's unfortunate. It, that's going to happen. A lot of teams with this goal buff, let's not have this conversation, really struggle with the finishing. We've been talking about that every single match recap. Which is shocking because you feel like a lot of tremendous attacking talent comes from South America. It just doesn't make sense. Correct. That's, I think that's what I struggle to accept about Argentina is that the defense is better than the attack right now, mm-hmm. at least on paper and in, in practice as well. Kind of weird. Do you want to say your man of the match and then let's, let's end it here? I hate to piggyback on Kone, but... No, you know what? Just to be different, I'll go Nandes. I thought Nandes had a hell Nandes of a game. Nandes was good. We, we love to talk about Schaffelberg. I would say the Canadian standout today was definitely Kone. Um, but, dude, Nandes pocketed Schaffelberg. He looked to be one of the only guys who gave a damn on the field. Correct. And it was noticeable. Because my man was suspended. He was like, hey, dude, I already missed the last game. Like, I'm getting back into it. Yeah. No, whatever the reasoning is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, credit, he showed credit up. to him. Credit to him for it. Credit yeah. to him. He, uh, he looked this. like he was playing a Copa America medaling round. Yeah, he did. he did. He looked like he was playing, I don't give a damn what it was. Yeah. He looked like he was playing his ass off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked like he was representing his nation, and you should always care when that's happening. I love the Nande shout, because I do think he was no, no excuse or no argument against top two players for Uruguay today. You could yeah. maybe say Josema, maybe just for the assist at the end. Yeah. You could maybe say, dude, who else could you say? <laughs> you could say Swat is third. I mean, I don't. For Uruguay, I'm ranking like the Uruguay. Right, right. Overall, I'm going Kone. Like, you have to. I think it was yeah. Kone. You could you could make an argument for Bombito, I think, as well. And Alistair Johnson, I thought, was very solid. But I think the two outstanding players were Not the outstanding Kone. players. Yeah. Yes. Not and it's. Players. To me, I don't want to say by a country mile, but it's by some distance. I agree. I agree. Yeah, man. To, to me, I just got really heated seeing all the comments saying that this is a, this is a friendly or the, then, the guys. Then why are you average. watching? Why are you paying attention? Yeah, why are we why are we having this? I mean, this why is, are we talking? This about is that? an amazing opportunity for other countries to to medal and to make history with their team. And I'm going to say it again: if Canada wins, it's the greatest achievement in their history. All the players will be telling their kids, their grandchildren forever about the time they beat Uruguay in a third place match. And to I, medal at the Copa America. Yeah, dude. That Messi was playing in. Yeah, dude. I think, it, I think it's really embarrassing. It's disingenuous. And it's like, it's the part of footy discussions that just, just becomes stupid and just a waste of time. You know, it's like you can't. If you truly believe that winning a medal for your country, again, I don't care if it's the Olympics, I don't care if it's the World Cup, I don't care if it's the U23 Asian Cup, whatever it is, you get a medal for your country, that's a massive deal. And if you turn your nose up at that, I think you're a bad fan. Yeah. I think you're a bad fan. Anything else you want to say before we end it? No, that's all I got to say. Credit to Canada. Credit to Canada. Man. You, wow. Ma- maple syrup merchants played their absolute hearts out, and frankly, I think yeah. they deserve a win today. Oh, they do. Yeah. They did deserve the win. Jesse Marsh, I mean, maybe keep him till the 2030 World Cup with how he's starting here. And you know what, dude? He answered a lot of doubters. There was a he lot of doubters lot coming of into doubters. this game. Yep. And after that, with the players that he had versus the players Bielsa had, I mean, <laughs> either Bielsa went or Jesse Marsh went whoop, or both. And after that performance, there's nothing else you can say. There's nothing else you can say. Uruguay, man, y'all got lucky. Y'all got lucky. It's hard to say. Y'all deserved it. But like I said, we'll talk more in depth about Canada, Uruguay, and all the other teams from the Copa America in our post-tournament recap slash reaction slash takeaways series (laughs) that'll be on the channel. We don't even know what we're doing here, folks. The entire channel's ad-libbed, our entire schedule, and daily lives. Uh, But if you want to see that again, hit subscribe. And again, we're going live for the final tomorrow, Colombia versus Argentina. So that should be, fingers crossed, at least a mildly entertaining game. Drop your thoughts down below in the comments. If you enjoy, smash the like button, and we'll see you guys in the next one.